My name's Keith Rucker. So in this episode, we're going to be back working on the Victor Safe restoration. And in some previous episodes that I've done, we've worked on restoring the uh, caster feet. Uh, there's four little casters rollers uh, that go up underneath the safe. And uh, uh, we went through and reworked uh, three out of four of those. And the fourth one uh, we've been waiting to do because uh, it's got a broken piece on it here. So there's supposed to be two of these little risers coming up here. Uh, the front one here is broken off, and this is the part that the, the wheel is captured in. So um, I've decided that I'm going to try to uh, make a new piece to go in here and uh, braze it and put it in there. And I think I've got a, uh, an idea of a way we can do this to give a nice solid repair uh, without having to, to get the entire piece recast. So that's what we're going to attempt to do today, um, or at least start working on today. Anyway, so uh, this is what we're trying to repair, and um, let's get you zoomed in over here on the mill where you can see what we're working on, and we'll show you our plan. So again, we need to make this little metal piece back here to fit in here. This was missing, it's gone. Uh, don't know what happened to it, but it'd be nice if we had the original piece that broke out, but we don't. So what I've got here is a piece of uh, iron. This is actually cast iron. Uh, that is on the table and we're going to start machining this and cutting out a piece to go in here. Now I've chosen to use uh, cast iron to do this repair with just simply because uh, I really when I'm brazing which I'm going to be doing some brazing um, it's I like a lot to be able to to weld two materials that are pretty much the same material when I'm brazing. Uh, not that I couldn't make this out of steel uh, but my experience has been when you're brazing steel on cast iron, uh, it's, it's a little bit difficult, or it can be a little bit difficult, uh, because the, the steel will heat up a lot faster and uh, quicker than the cast iron will, and you really need to have those, both of those temperatures kind of roughly the same temperature uh, to get a good bond. So, uh, uh, you know, I say that now, and I'm probably going to actually be doing some steel on cast iron uh, brazing, uh, later on, but it's a little bit different situation than this. So in this situation, I really want to put a piece of cast iron back in here. So I found uh, this piece of cast iron here. This is a uh, just a slab that was cut off of another part, uh, and it's about a half inch thick. Uh, the the problem is or that or not problem, but the, what I'm dealing with now though is that this is a is about three eighths inch, a little over three eighths of an inch thick back here. So I wanted to get the thickness of this part down to match so that these two parts back here where they meet will be you know roughly the same thickness right now uh, it's about a hundred thousandths uh, too large so we're gonna just put this in the the mill here uh, I don't need the whole length all I really need to work on is just a little piece on the end here uh, but we're gonna take and uh, mill this down uh, to the same thickness as uh, what we see here and to do that I'm gonna be doing it on the uh, vertical mill uh, using this uh, um, this um, uh, face cutter uh, to do that. All right, so I've measured this. This is about 525 thousandths uh, thick right now, and I've also measured this web back here, and that's uh, just a touch over 400 thousandths. We're going to call it 400 thousandths. It's a rough casting, so it's hard to get a good measurement on uh, within a few thousandths of that anyway. So we're going to mill this 125 thousandths off of that piece, and uh, probably do that in a couple of passes here, and. Uh, Go from there. So let's uh, come up. We'll touch off. All right, and let's see if we can do seventy-five thousandths on the first pass. Should be able to. All right, we got this milled down to the proper thickness now, and the uh, next step I need to do is, 
is uh, laid out uh, with this profile. And uh, I'm just going to trace it, but I think what I'm going to do is actually work on uh, the back side of this just because it's all flat across. And I can lay that up on there and get a little bit better surface. So I think I'm just going to lay this all out with die cam. Uh, and then we'll trace it out and uh, go cut that out on the bandsaw. All right, we've let this dry, this die cam dry for a little while. And I've just got a little uh, carbide scriber here. And we're just going to kind of... Trace this out. So we're over on the bandsaw now, and uh, this has got a metal cutting blade, and we got the speed uh, reduced down to slow speed for cutting metal. And uh, we're just going to try to follow this line. I don't know how tight I'm going to be able to get with the radius uh, with this blade, so I may have to kind of do some fiddling around to uh, get the radius out. My goal here is to leave the line, and then I'll come in and actually uh, probably sand down to it uh, to get the final the final uh, profile. So we're going to just come in here and uh, use the sander here to kind of work on this profile on the back. Now I'm over on my oscillating spindle sander and we're going to put this radius in here hopefully. All right, so I took this piece here and um, we just traced this line on it and I went to the uh, bandsaw, did it off camera, but you know, just kind of got a roughed out uh, curve for us to work with. And now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take this over to the bench grinder and I'm gonna work on fine tuning this to get a nice good fit up in here. We'll bevel both sides of this and this uh, to get it ready to prep uh, for welding or brazing. So. Uh, our goal now is really just to kind of get this all to meld together and get as good a tight a fit as we can uh, before we go to brazen.
so we're ready to start raising this back together now. So again, we've created this blank out of a blank piece of blank cast iron. I've cut it out to the same profile. You know, it's pretty darn close to what was down on the, on the originally there. Uh, we've cut this profile out here uh, to match it as close as we can get. It's not just perfect, but it's pretty darn close and it's going to be good enough to get that braised material to flow into. Uh, I've cleaned everything real well. This has been the bead blaster, so it was bead blasted and then obviously this area that we're working in here was ground out as well to create this V and that's going to be the area that we're going to fill in with the brazing rod and then uh, we'll also have to do it on the, the back side down here when we get through. So I've got a spacer in here, just a piece of steel and some shim material. This is all clamped in place. Uh, it should hold it in place real good while we do this. So again, just like in my previous brazing videos, step one here is we're just going to take a little bit of time and get some heat in this. We're not going to get in a big hurry, uh, just slowly kind of heat it up. Uh, and once we get it, you know, good and hot, then I'm going to come in here and we'll start focusing on one area. We'll get the metal more or less kind of a cherry red and uh, we'll start uh, running a, a bead all the way down here. And I'll probably start on this side and, and work towards me. Um, just kind of go right along there. So let's uh, get cracking with, uh, with the brazen here. So guys, um, this is going to be a little bit awkward, but for some reason my audio didn't work on a couple of clips here, so I'm going to try my best to narrate over this and uh, tell you what's going on. So I'm, I'm showing you right here the, the braise uh, that we got finished doing on this part, and uh, basically I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out, and I think this is going to be pretty strong repair, um, but it's probably, it, it could be better, I'll just put it that way. And I'm a little bit worried with all the weight of the, on the casters uh, being on just that piece. So if you look over on the original part, you notice how you got that little raised up spot there uh, where the, it's in the casting where you just got a little extra beef. And over here, uh, we don't have that. It's not in here at all. Um, and, you know, we could have milled that out, I guess, in that blank. But what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to actually come in here or not think I am going to come in here and we're going to actually put... A piece of steel uh, in there and I'm going to mill out a slot uh, in there for this to go down into and then we will um, actually take some screws and uh, mechanically attach it using some screws uh, to the piece uh, countersunk screws in there and then I will braze everything in place all the way around it and uh, when I get through with that what I should end up with is a real nice looking piece and I, and I kind of get that same look as the other side we got that little raised ridge in there uh, but with this I'll actually have a mechanical scab going across both pieces uh, that will be screwed in place in addition to being brazed in and that should really beef up this repair uh, and help it to withstand any uh, extra stresses that may come on it uh, for example if the safe gets dropped again like before uh, to just uh, help support that brazed up area across there so not all of the um, strengthen the repairs just in that braze job. So anyway, we're going to take this over to the milling machine, get that milled out, and uh, I think you'll see what we're talking about and uh, uh, get a real nice looking repair out of this. And as my audio problems persist, uh, I'm going to continue narrating here a little bit. Uh, so we've got this laid out over on the milling machine now, or set up on the milling machine. Everything's clamped in. I've still got my bar down in there in between. Uh, to just give me some support 
is clamped in place. I laid the piece up on there and just traced over there with a Sharpie pen just to get a rough idea of the of the of where I needed to mill this out. And I'm going to mill it out a little bit wider. I don't want it to be a perfect fit. I actually want to have some extra space in there uh, for the braids to flow down into. So uh, uh, you know, it's not anything critical as far as this diameter. It just needs to be a little bit larger uh, than that. So this is all set up. Um, you know, we're just going to come in here now and uh, go down. Uh, and the the thickness of the piece of steel is a quarter of an inch. And uh, we're going to take that mill and actually go about half of that thickness down into, so about an eighth of an inch deep uh, through there is what we're going to shoot for. And again, it's not anything that's got to be just perfect. And uh, we're just using a half inch end mill here. And uh, anyway, we'll touch off and get her going. We're going to drill and countersink these and then tap them 1032 and put some machine screws in here. So, uh, got a number 21 drill bit. And I couldn't get in here with this little small countersink because of the way the chuck is hitting on this. So, I've got a little bit larger countersink that's on an extension. Uh, that I should be able to reach in there. It's got a little bit of run out in it, but I think it'll be all right for what we're doing here. So we've got this uh, set up over here now for brazing. You can see the uh, the scab that I put on here with some mechanical fasteners in there, and that should give us a lot of strength in this piece. And then when you add on the additional brazing in the surface area around that piece, uh, I think we'll have a very solid uh, repair with this. So just like before, I've got a spacer in between here, the proper thickness. That's just to help keep this from moving when I heat it up, uh, keep it all solid. Um, and we're just going to slowly heat it up just like we did before and uh, start brazing this thing out and uh, get it like we want it. So uh, let's get going.
I can give you guys an update on um, on this. So this cooled out overnight. Um, I came in this morning and just I put in the bead blaster, just cleaned it up, got all the um, uh, flux and stuff off of it. Uh, did a little bit of grinding on the bottom to kind of meld that in, and uh, you know I'm I'm very satisfied with it. Uh, I need to put it back in the bead blaster. I, I did a little more chipping and got a little more of the stuff off, so I got some color differences there. But um, I like when I do any kind of thing like this to put in everything in the bead blaster because it kind of gives everything a uniform texture uh, before you go in and paint it. Uh, so anyway, before I put some paint on, I am going to hit it one more time and kind of clean this up a little bit more uh, in here. But before I do that, uh, we're going to go ahead and we'll um, punch the hole all the way through. Um, you know, the wheel is ready to go in here. Uh, so we just need to punch that hole through uh, for our axle and uh, just like we did the other ones and uh, we'll go do that real quick and probably go ahead and put a coat of paint on it just so I can get the paint all up on the inside real well and uh, let that dry and then we'll we'll pin the wheel in. So we've got this just set up on the drill press and uh, hopefully this is going to work out all right. Uh, I'm going to just probably take my time drilling it because I put a lot of pressure on this. It's not the most solid setup I've ever had but I think this will work. Um, we're just going to use one side as a guide to get us started. I'm going to put this bar over here, just kind of give me some pressure up underneath it. So test fit everything here. I got my axle pin and uh, that's lining up. It's hitting a little burr right on the end, but it'll, it'll tap right through with a hammer. I'm not worried about that. In fact, it being a little bit tight is probably good. And test fit it with the wheel here. There we go. So that's going to be just right. So, um, Again, I'm going to take this over now and uh, shoot it with some paint, mainly so I can get it all painted up on the inside here. And uh, after that dries, uh, we'll come over here and we will um, brad on this wheel. Let it cool down. So here you go guys, uh, we're done with the uh, the caster part of the restoration. So all of these have been redone. The wheels have all been uh, reworked, new bronze bushings in there, nice and tight. Before these wheels, you can literally just shake them back and forth where they had worn. And uh, so they're, they're good to go, you know, hopefully another 100 years. Um, you know, I'm ha I'm very happy with my repairs on both of these. I think both of these are going to be very serviceable. They're going to they hold up well, uh, and they're not very noticeable either one of them. Again, the the one that had the big part here, it's going to be completely out of sight. Uh, the one that we had to braise up that was broken in half uh, is actually this one right here, and you can, there's only just a little small part that will be visible from the outside, and and with the paint on there, uh, it's hardly even noticeable. And again. I'm going to mount both of these that were broken in the back of the safe, uh, so uh, they'll even be less visible uh, once we uh, once they get on there. You know, um, these casters, you know, once they go on the safe, will be kind of like this, and of course the safe will be on top of it. So my repair on the inside here, it's not even going to be visible. Uh, it'll be completely out of sight. It'll be completely hidden unless you have someone crawling around on the floor looking up underneath the safe 
uh, you'll never even notice it. So I did leave the exposed screws in here. Uh, you know, I had several people tell me, why don't you just take some Bondo and cover those up, sand them down, and uh, you know, be totally hidden. And uh, I decided I'd, I'd leave the repair where it was visible in this case, uh, just so there's a story to tell. And so, you know, if someone else is working on this down the road, it, you know, they can tell that it was actually repaired. Uh, you know, if it was on the outside a little more visible, yeah, I'd probably go to a little bit extra trouble, but I am think I'm going to leave it like this. Sometimes when you do repair work, guys, uh, you know, you need to leave some signs that you did that so that the next guy coming along uh, working on it can actually tell what happened and what went wrong and, uh, and how, it was, how it was repaired uh, so that if it has to be repaired again. Uh, as someone who is doing repairs on machines that have been repaired, who knows when, I, you know, I find that useful. You know, you, we, you don't ever want to do a bad job on a repair, but I never complain when I can see how a repair was done because then I can make a judgment call as to whether I need to go in there and do something different about it or let it alone. And, and quite honestly, most of the time, if it's an old repair and it's still holding up, I just, uh, I just let them alone. There's no reason to, to tear it apart and redo it. So uh, anyway, this is ready to go. What's next on the safe restoration? Uh, my next step is going to be working on the actual main part of the safe and I need to get it completely clean, all the old paint stripped off of it. And uh, you know, I've got access to a uh, sandblaster out of the museum, but man, I hate using that thing. It's, it's just, it makes such a mess uh, and anyway. Uh, but I've been looking into soda blasting and uh, actually I've had several of you guys on the forums or on the, on the uh, comments a comment about looking at soda blasting as an option uh, to, to take that paint off. And uh, I've been looking at, you know, maybe making a, a small investment in a decent uh, soda blasting outfit uh, that I can use down the road. Uh, I've got access to a, you know, glass bead, a, a blasting cabinet, uh, you know, that I can do smaller parts in that I use a lot. I use it on these wheels. And I love my blasting cabinet with glass beads in it, but uh, very often I, I, I need to work on something bigger. Uh, and I'm really interested in the soda blasting, mainly because the cleanup, you know, you don't have uh, that sand out there, the, 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 the baking soda that's basically used in there is biodegradable. It pretty much goes away on its own. So uh, I'm, I'm looking into that and uh, maybe down the road you get to see some soda blasting. Uh, we'll see. Uh, also been working on the, the plans for the dial, uh, the little brass dial. And uh, 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 Charles Marlin, who did my pattern stuff for me, I, I actually got him, he drew it up in SolidWorks and uh, he actually has printed me out a pattern to cast that knob. Uh, my initial plan was I was just going to get a piece of brass and, and turn it, but then I started pricing <laughs> some three and four inch diameter round stock brass and uh, uh, the sticker shot there got me. I, I think I can probably cast those parts uh, and save a lot of money. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking at that as an option right now. So uh, hopefully we'll get some patterns coming in here pretty quick. And, uh, and that'll be good because several of you guys have been talking about how you want to see me do some foundry work. And uh, while I got the drain cock project, you know, that's kind of not high on the priority list. The safe dial is a little bit higher on the priority list. So uh, maybe we'll get to see some some uh, some casting work, some foundry work coming up here pretty soon. So we'll wrap this one up. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you to my many subscribers. Uh, if you like it, hit the like button. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so. And uh, you know, tell your friends about me, whatever. And uh, you know, maybe we can keep this thing going. So uh, thank you all so much for watching.